Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to try to get this straightened out. I don't know why I have to turn my laptop um, sideways like this, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Some reason or another. Praise God. Okay. Well, amen, Jesus. We're going to... I I think I got that spelt wrong up there. Uh, disciples. 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 Yeah. I think that's better. You have to forgive me. My Sometimes I'll make comments, too, that I have a strange way of writing words. Uh, probably lack a little education along that line, and uh, so my spelling isn't always as good as it ought to be. I try to get it as close as possible, so most of you who are uh, much more forgiving, okay, <laughs> get the point of what I'm trying to say. Or write. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we've got some issues here to deal with. Okay. And I, and I know you guys... Well, I don't know if you guys know it or you don't know it. You know, I... Uh, amen, Jesus. Just a minute. Somebody's at the door. Evidently, my voice is traveling too far, <laughs> so I can't talk on my my uh, my YouTube uh, sharing a message with you unless I close my sliding glass door. Okay, I'd say that's stretching things just a little bit too far. Okay, <laughs> and <coughs> praise God. If I was having a band or there was a loud uh, party going on up here, and you know, there was a neighbor next door. Okay, but no, I've I've, I've got a security guard who has walked by my doorway, okay, under my patio, and heard my voice outside of my <clears throat> apartment, and 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 has deemed that to be too noisy, and that I should close my door. Well, <coughs> that ain't gonna happen. Okay, <clears throat> this ain't Russia, and I'm not disturbing anybody's peace. And he's just a little bit out of line, but that's okay. Praise God. It happens. Anyway, we've got to uh, begin to start to see something here that, uh, like I said, I don't know if you have or you haven't. And, and you know, I understand how hard it can be, okay, and how easily, because of everything around us, all right, that just it, for so many years, we have been so far away from what has been given to us as sound doctrine, all right, that most people today don't even know what the church really is. They've totally lost any concept of what the church is. Amen? So, praise God. I'm going to do what I can to try to help you to understand and to see where we've erred at through the teachings, okay? I, I, please, don't, don't take these things 
as if, okay, someone's trying to make you feel bad <laughs> about who you are. God knows, all right, that you've been being misled, okay, and that the truth hasn't been being spoken to you, all right? And just so we don't upset anyone, I decided I'd close the door because I don't want to have to deal with circumstances. This is this is really sad. You know what it is, right? It's it's the sharing of the word of God. I mean, it's going to be so bad out here that, Amen. I I I, I just don't think many of us even understand the. Uh, we're all getting ready to take place, but uh, we've got to be, we've got to know our way back to where we should have been. <clears throat> and we have to understand that we, even though we did not know or did not understand up till now, what is being shared with us okay God is hearing it be shared with you so you're not going to be able to say well I didn't know that I didn't understand that okay that's the whole point of the call to repentance you can't have a call to repentance unless there's something that needs to be repented of okay now this example of as the day of Jonah is the direct relationship we have relative to what Jesus said would take place, okay, in the end. That would be as in the days of Jonah, Noah, and Lot. Okay? So that being what it is, <laughs> you either receive it or you don't. Uh, our being called to repentance has to be based upon something. So we might as well start getting ready to accept a few facts that up until now we may not have known were true, although, okay, for whatever reason, and I've often mentioned to you, amen Jesus, that uh, it, a lot of it has to do with where the Lord would have us to be prior to this period of time. Okay, and I've shared with you why I believe the vast majority of the church as the wheat, okay, has been asleep spiritually. So they would know these things. Okay, well, because if you knew these things and you didn't do them, then you'd be guilty and that's what he was saying to that Pharisee. When the Pharisee says, I see, I see. In other words, he understood. He was telling the Lord that he understood. And the Lord's reply to him was, but because you say you see, your sins will remain with you. We don't want our sins remaining with us, brothers and sisters, please. So, for the sake of those of you who are probably hearing my voice, maybe for the first time, or what is being shared, maybe for the first time, or for those of you who are finally coming to the point of which you're beginning to understand what's being said to you, who've been here for a while, all right, please don't take the position of saying you know. Don't say you see. Because when you say you see and you say you know, 
you need to be doing these things and not just saying you see them. Okay? It's not those who are the hearers of the word of God who shall be forgiven, but the doers. All right? And that's what we need to start getting ready for. The doing. And so we're going to have to look at ourselves, look at the relationship of what the church has always really been meant to be, which has been written down, which I, amen, Jesus, I, I shared. I, got, I think it's, can you, you probably can't see that from there. Um, yeah, you can. It's right there. Let me pull this in a little bit closer. Maybe you can see the writing, actually. Right there. What's that say? It says, history book. Past tense, present tense. We've been taught, even Jesus, to read the Word of God as if it was a history book. Okay? Something that took place back then, but is not pertinent, not supposed to be a part of what is going on today. And then when we read it, for some reason or another, we don't see the disciples. We don't see Jesus teaching, discipling. Okay? Somehow or another we figure we don't have to do these things. We don't have to be discipled. That in and among the church, among the many-membered body, that we were to bring in new believers, that they might be discipled. You see, we just want them to come there on Sunday, drop off a little bit of an offering, make themselves feel good about showing up one day a week for 45 minutes, and let them go. I can assure you that is not discipleship. That's not even close. But yet that's what the church was established upon. The cornerstone established the teaching of discipleship. So the other day when I mentioned to you that I personally did not feel as though a body should grow beyond a hundred, I connect that to the 99 which Jesus talked about. Which one of you, okay, after having, you know, the 99, finding one that was missing, they were, he was referring to sheep, but for those of us who <laughs> know, spiritually speaking, what Jesus was talking about was us. Okay, 99 sheep. Which one would not leave the 99 to search after the one? So when I say I don't think they should have grown any more than 100, that's where I get that from. I also get that from divine order, 10 to 12. Okay. The, uh, there's a lot of different things that go into this. The, the seven different tables, and I'm not going to go into a lot of different areas like that uh, in the feeding. It's just that no matter what the group is, if you've got one teacher, one brother, who has a good knowledge of, and understanding of the Word of God, he is walking circumspectly regarding this world, okay, without your judging what he looks like or acts, you know, what he's... Father God, listen, there isn't anybody, I don't think, in the church that doesn't need to be restored or healed, delivered from something. I, I, I just don't believe that. Okay. I don't believe there are any straight up and down perfect saints. I just don't. That being what it is, if you're looking for someone who appears to you which is where a lot of you get in trouble. Okay? 
to be walking circumspectly on the surface. Okay. You, and then you follow after him, but then two or three years or two or three months down the road, all of a sudden you find out he's been sleeping with uh, some other brother's wife. Okay. All of a sudden, what you thought you saw on the outside isn't really there anyway, is it? So why did Jesus, what did Jesus, what did the apostles, what, what were the teachings? Judge no man after the flesh, what you see on the outside, but by Christ Jesus in him. Okay? None of us. Okay? We're supposed to be looking at each other in the flesh. But in the spirit. We're to overlook the things. Okay? Does that mean I was, I was supposed to be allowed to go ahead and be around and be a, a drunkard or a drug addict or uh, be a, a wife beater or a thief or all the other things? Okay? That was okay for me to be that and then I could stand up here and still share the word of God and that everybody should accept that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm talking about weaknesses and infirmities, they, uh, a brother might smoke a cigarette. I, I smoke still, okay? I wish I didn't, but I do, all right? And, uh, or, uh, there's a lot of different things. Overeating, okay? Just because a brother's a little heavy set, okay? It, it might, need, might need to be on a diet, <laughs> okay? You might have a case of gluttony. Okay, things along that line, all right? <laughs> because why? Because you're not without them, okay? Judge, <laughs> if you're going to judge, judge according to what you want to be judged by. Well, okay, that leaves the door wide open, amen, Jesus? Uh, well... Well, maybe I won't be able to smoke pot, so I, 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 I'm looking for a brother that teaches and, and smokes pot. That way, you know, I, I won't judge him. Come on. See. You're, you're, you're skirting around the issue in Jesus, okay, to find fault in something that you shouldn't even be trying to find fault in. And that's the truth. The truth is, none of us are perfect, but it doesn't have anything to do with a person being led by the Spirit of God to speak the truth in love. And that's what I want you to get your minds and your hearts upon. Listening to the Spirit of truth being spoken in love. Listening to the voice of those many waters. So get your eyes off of people and open up your ears and start to hear what is being said. The ears of your heart. That the eyes of your heart might be open to see the truth. That's why a lot of times I, I have often thought about if, if I ever, you know, if there were uh, was enough time, uh, which I don't believe there is, and I was to continue in this laying down of my life that I've, by the grace of God, have been able to come into. Uh, I would probably get away from YouTube videos and get more into uh, uh, CDs where you're just hearing the person speak. And I probably could do that, but it's, you know, <laughs> I'm getting way off of the subject. I, I but. How else do you fellowship with one, one another? How, how do you get real with each other unless you start to discuss these things that you're thinking about in your own mind? I listen to other videos, and i got to tell you, I, I really, I, I'm drawn in more when I hear someone expressing their thoughts in regards to their own personal relationship with, with Jesus, the Word of God, all right, and the Father, than I am anybody else that's out here trying to do whatever it is they're trying to do. Okay. I, 
I, I'm drawn mo more into personal relationships, which is what I'm trying to share. So, what happened? Well, you know, we talked about this a uh, uh, couple videos ago, and I shared in the last video, just maybe a day or day ago, I guess. And uh, the sound doctrine, amen, Jesus, that was given to us in the establishing of the church, the Alpha, okay, has stopped being acted upon as it was for the first, I think, two or three hundred years. It's my belief that you, you, no one person as a teacher, by the grace of God, should be discipling any more than ten or twelve people at any one time. Okay, uh, out of respect. Okay, for the number of disciples that Jesus taught. Now, no one will ever be able to compare themselves, Amen, Jesus, to the teacher that Jesus was, and he only had twelve disciples. So I base that upon that. Okay. Now, what was discipleship for? What is discipleship? If you're really a member of the church, okay, this is only for those who are actually desiring to be a part of the church, not a church, but the church, okay, and as a part of the faith, okay, because there's <laughs> it's not for everybody else. And that's part of what discipleship is. You see, no one, I don't believe anyone, okay, is supposed to just be brought in, sat down, received and accepted, and then forgotten about regarding his spiritual life. What he's learning, what he's growing to know, what he's coming into. <clears throat> It's my belief that they took them aside very soon, those new converts, and they sat down with them and they explained what being a disciple of Jesus Christ actually meant. It meant that they were to lay their lives down, not live in this world in a life caring for their own wants, and desires. That's what it's meant by laying your life down. Okay. Those who have actually been being discipled by Jesus Christ, all right, have been being taught how to separate themselves from the things in this world so that they're not attached to them whether they had to be denied them or made to look like a fool, never able to be able to put two nickels together to come up with a dime so they could own anything, whatever the case might be, whatever it took to keep them separated from the world long enough to begin to understand the path that they were on did not want them to have property, did not want them to be held in the bondage of the things of this life. The true disciples have been discipled through this so that they have no attachments to the things of the earth, material things. That's what's been going on in their lives 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 years. Separated wholly unto God means exactly what it means. <laughs> okay. Well, what are we supposed to do? Live like monks, monasteries? Well, it's a, now that you've mentioned that, haven't you ever thought about, and I've mentioned this before, about the nuns and the priests? What, what do you think would make a person, all right, believe that they should turn away from the world and everything in it and enter into a monastery? 
Are they just off of their rockers? Or is there some legitimate reason, albeit misguided, to the extent of which they separated themselves? Because, personally speaking, I believe we were supposed to be in the community, not cloistered someplace which a lot of faiths, like I've talked about, the Quakers and the Shakers <coughs> and uh, the Amish, you know, they want to separate themselves from the whole world. They don't even want to be a part of the world, okay, in the world, all right. They don't even want to be in the world. Okay, the word says in the world, but not of the world. So we were supposed to be able to walk, okay, to having regular jobs, dealing with everyday affairs like every other person. But the light that was to shine forth from us was our relationship with Jesus, the Word of God, with the Father. We were being set free from the bondage of these things by not having them possess us or for us to possess them. <clears throat> so they would spend time with them, it's my belief, explaining to them exactly what it was that they were entering into when they entered into the body. There are many uh, other books, writings, that you can find concerning that period of time shortly in and around that uh, first 70 years and or the first 100 to 200 to 300 years. And the conversation, part of the conversation of most of the books you will read about the history of the church in that early period will show to you that most new converts spent two or three years, okay, and we've talked about this before, all right, learning what it was to be a disciple and to walk in the way before the community even received them in to the body. If you read about it, you can get some history books on that. <laughs> I suppose they call it the ancient church, but that's, you know, <laughs> uh, the first 300 years of the church. You'll see that that's part of the conversation. That's part of what some taught. And that's not what's being taught now. That's why we have the superficiality that I'm talking about, even in our relationship with one another. And surely you don't believe that that's what Jesus died for. Let me show you something else on here. Um, it's a very important quote in the, in the Word of God. Uh, let's see here. Love one another as Christ loved the church and laid down his life, died for her. This is how we're to love one another, brothers and sisters. Can you honestly say that you know a brother and sister in the Lord, that you love like Jesus did the church, and laid your life down for. Giving up of the things of your wants and desires for the sake of others. Very few of us have even done anything close to that. Yet that is what we were asked to do. This is only part of what we've got to repent from. It's only a small part. There is so much more that in the church that our lives would have been and should have been and could have been had this work continued to take place as it was in the beginning. 
but it didn't. And we're forgiven. Up to the point that we begin to believe by faith in the truth of what's being said to us. From that point on, God knows, you know, in your heart, what the truth is. And from this point on, trust me, you will be held responsible for either doing it or not doing it. Because the time of the make-believe church, the pretend believer, is done. You will either walk in the way as a true disciple of Jesus Christ and follower, doing what he asked us to do that we have not done, or you will not enter in. This is that call to repentance that all of us are going to have to deal with. I love you and the Lord be with you and bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen.